Hi guys. I just was thinking about what I've been going through uh, kind of uh, this past week. Uh, sometimes when you're um, online or on social media um, and you're not affiliated um, with the church or anything, people think they can say stuff about you. And let me say uh, something about uh, social media. Um, social media is not a good place or a bad place. It's not of the devil or of God. It's a tool. And it depends on who you, uh, what you, or who you use it for. And I think if Paul had things like Facebook or Instagram, I can't imagine what he would do. Uh, when I look at the book of Acts and the letters of Paul, and I, uh, and, um, and I look at the stories um, of Paul and how he traveled on donkeys for miles and how he traveled on ships and stuff and was persecuted and all of that. I think of what he did that then in second temp in the in the his what they call second temple Judaism. That's when um the Jews were exiled and they rebuilt the temple and then they came back so they call that period of time second temple because it's the period of the second temple a uh, bit of bible college history there for you um from what i remember from tyndale um i think going back to that we need to be really mindful of what we post and also what we comment. We need to understand that with every comment you make, there's a person behind that comment. There's a person there's a story behind that comment. If you don't like the video or if you don't like a person's video or if you don't want to see it, change it, you know, or delete it from your feed. Or there's a thing on YouTube where if they suggest a video and you don't like it, there's a, there's a thing in the corner, and I've done this several times. Uh, where you can say, don't, don't request that channel again, or I'm not interested in the video. So I don't know what gives us the right to comment and say things that we have no idea. Because you don't know what that person is going through. You don't know the pain or the whatever that person is feeling or going through. So just be careful. And one more thing, be careful what you say about people of God. Even if you don't agree or understand uh, what they're preaching or what they're saying, you don't need to. You don't need to. Frankly, it is none of your business. It's between them and God. And you may not be helped by it. You may think it's stupid or foolishness. But there might be some... There, there is someone out there that will be helped by it. And who are you to say that, oh, because you think this is strange or whatever that it's not of God. It's up to the person and God. And I, I will say to any preacher out there, 
um, pastor, teacher, whatever. You just keep going. You keep preaching. You keep doing that despite your critics. They don't need to understand you. Not every, nobody understood Jesus. They thought he was crazy. So that's why they killed him. And the more critics you have is the more that, that God is going to use you and set you up. And not everybody will understand you. People didn't understand Jesus, and you know what? That's okay. O only if you know that you're called by God. Now, granted, everybody needs to have a circle of trusted people that can call them on the carpet, that can... Um, correct them if necessary, and whatever, and whoever ha uh, God has called to their life, um, they, they need to submit to that person and, you know, listen to that person's, um, listen to that person's uh, feedback, because Good feedback can only make you better. Call from one eight five 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 six one zero six six zero. Call from one eight five 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 six one zero six six zero. Hello, please leave the message after the tone. So, yeah, I'm just saying to be careful um, of what you say about people because you don't, you don't know what anointing they have on their lives. You see them and you watch their videos or you see them uh, performing or you see them preaching, but you don't know what they're going through. And the Bible says, touch not the Lord's anointed. anointed. And I would say to any preacher, any pastor, whether you have a church or not, if the anointing of the Lord, if the hand of the Lord is upon you, they can't stop you. So don't let people's words stop you. Um, what I do is basically uh, use the, the breathe in, breathe out method. And that basically is... Um, when somebody says anything, I breathe it in, take it in to see if there's any validity to it. And if there's not, I breathe it out. And I, I let it, it fuel me. I let it fuel me. And it's easy to compare yourself to other preachers. Oh, well, I'm not as good as that person or that person knows something else that I don't know. And what I've learned, I was talking to the Lord because I, I, I saw somebody that I really admire and respect say some stuff. And um, I asked the Lord, well, maybe I'm like this. Maybe I need to go back to the cross. and Maybe I need to not do this anymore because... She's right, maybe I use too much of the secular and whatever. And God said to me this. God said to me, ah, she, she is not going where you're going. She, she is for the church. You're for outside of the church. You're for the church and outside of it. So... He says, I've called you to play in both realms. See, because he said, most people are called to be in one realm or the other. They're called to be in the church or um, be in the world, be in the, secu in the secular realm. But where you're going... 
you're going to be in both realms. You're going to be a Christian, but you you are a Christian, you are my daughter, but you are going to stand in both realms. So now I've got to get you prepared for that. I've got to get you to pre prepared for when two men come into your office and say that this is my husband, you don't flinch. Or when a group of people, when like three men and one woman come into your come into your office and say, these are my husbands, and you don't, not to flinch, not to judge, but just to speak the love of God to their lives. And he says, not everybody is built for what you're built for. And he said, I give you the information that you need for where I'm taking you. So be aware, be aware of the assignment and your assignment. And God try, and God explained it to me like this. The assignment is the global church assignment, which is to go, 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 go through go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature or every creation. And my assignment is to be a voice for a generation. So he said, ministers, pastors, preachers, whatever, need to be aware of the assignment, which is to go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature, and their own assignment which is a part of that, what part do you play? And you'll only find that out uh, through relationship with God and through trial and error. And, no, and nobody can move you from your assignment unless you let them. If you're assigned to real estate, that's where you'll stay. If you're assigned to teaching, that's what you say, and and critics will come, and critics will go. But what you do with with your critics, what you do with that information, um, will will determine um, what he can trust you with. And I've and I've learned that I'm I'm just gonna keep on doing what I'm doing because. I'm affecting people's lives for good. I know that. I know um, people in, in high places are seeing me and they're receiving it because I, I just know that. And like nobody can move me or tell me how I preach is weird. It may not be how you would would like it to be or may not be how you would operate, but who are you? Like, really, and we need to be aware of what we're saying, what we're commenting, what we're saying about people that we don't even know, because the Lord said, touch not the Lord's anointed. So even if you disagree or even if you don't like a certain person, you don't have to listen. You don't have to watch. You can unsubscribe. You can, um, you can say, this is not for me. And because you don't you don't have to say, to share your opinion about everything if you if you hear something that you don't want just turn the video off go to other videos if you hear something that doesn't rec resonate with you and oh you think that's strange 
you can just go on the other videos. Unless you're assigned to that person's life, to that preacher's life, to that person's, like, circle. Shut up. Really. Really. Just, just pray for that person. Get on your knees and pray for that person. Pray that the Lord be with them and show them or whatever. Don't get on social media and start commenting for the fun of it when you don't know what that person is going through. You don't know their struggle. You've just heard something. So now you have an opinion. Your opinion doesn't matter when it comes to other people's lives. And be careful who you put your mouth on. Because I'll tell you one thing about God is he doesn't play. And if you touch one of his anointed, he'll deal with you. That person won't have to say anything. That person won't have to do anything. They can go out go with their business like, like crazy. They can go about their business and everything could be all right. But the Lord sees what you're doing online. So let's use social media for good. Let's spread love. Let's be kind to people. And if we don't agree, we can just change it. Watch another video. Or go and do something else. We don't have to say everything we think. And the what and God sees beyond our screens. So that person may not see, see who you are, that celebrity may not see who you are, that pastor may not see who you are, but God sees who you are. And if you touch his anointed, oh my gosh. He knows who you are. And just be very careful about who you put your mouth on. Or who you put your words on. And like my mother used to say, if you can't say anything good or anything positive, don't say it at all. And yes, I, th I think you need to um, be discerning about who you take in. But know that, that that is a real person on the other side that you are messing with, that you are putting your mouth on, that you are, um, that you are spreading their business or whatever. And people are like, they're celebrities. They know this. But yes, they are. But they are still people. And they are still God's child. And don't, don't think because they're celebrities, they're not covered by God. And if you have the audacity to say what you're going to say, that person may not see you, that person may not care, but God cares. And when God's got your back, honey, you're set up. And I would say to any celebrity right now, or any person or any preacher that's struggling with the comments or whatever, let no one chase you off your platform. If God has called you to preach on Facebook, Stay there. If God has called you to YouTube, stay there. If God has called you to whatever platform, Instagram, TikTok, stay there. If God has called you to all three, stay there. Let no one chase you off. Because the amount of comments, mean comments that you get is nowhere near to the amount of positive people positive comments and people that you're helping. 
the mean comments that I get is nowhere compared to the people I'm helping. And I just want want you to be encouraged to stay in it. God sees you. He's proud of you. He loves you. And let your let your haters fuel fuel you. Don't let them falter you. Know what your calling is. Know what your design is and do it and do it well. Don't give up because these people said something about you. You know who you are. You know what happened in this situation and that's it. And he'll shut people's mouths for you. Because he loves you that much. Stay in the fight. Don't give up. Don't give up. Let it set your face, face like flint and keep moving. Go forward in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Bye. Give us strength to withstand the critics, God. Give us strength, God, to withstand the critics. In the name of Jesus, amen. I surrender all. Oh, I surrender all, all to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender. The more your critics are after you is the more is the more God is do, doing something. Because the devil wants to chase you away just when God is going to do things. So that's why the way is so hard. Keep going, my brother. Keep going, my sister. He's proud of you. He sees what people don't see. He sees the work. He sees the time. He sees the tears. He sees the sacrifice. He knows the sacrifice. He's seen it. He's seen when everybody goes out Saturday night and you're in your home praying and seeking the Lord for your word. Or he's seen the family engagements that you've missed. He's seen he's seen everything like that. And he'll and just surrender. Just surrender your ministry. Even if your ministry is online, just surrender it. Just surrender it. And you know what? If you if you let him work through all your life, he'll teach you how to balance probably, how to be there for your family or your and your kids and your ministry. He'll he'll teach you. Uh, using your own life, using your own how, you using your own family and your own, he'll teach you how to prioritize if you let him. Just surrender it all. Just surrender it all. Know that he's proud of you. Know that he loves what you're doing. He doesn't only love you. He loves what you're doing. And it may not seem like people are getting it. And it may not seem that your video gets a lot of views. But he's seeing it. And the the few 
few views that it gets, you don't know who those views are. One day it could be a person designed to help you. Until then, keep going, keep preaching, keep teaching, keep staying in the fight. Because it is a fight. And you, in your own way, are designed to take, to use his word, to rescue people from the pit of hell. And you are designed to tell people not only about Jesus, but to walk Jesus out. You don't need to answer back comments. You don't need to celebrate people's nasty. Let the let them continue being nasty. Let them sing continue saying how how you do what you do is weird. It's none of their business anyway. It's none of their concern. It's between you and God and the amount of people who are being helped through the ministry and what God has put in you whether it be real estate, is far beyond what you know. It's far beyond what you know. And I will not let people's comments, good, bad, or ugly, chase me off or change how I do things. This is me. If they don't like it, they can watch someone else. I don't have time to worry about whether this so. So-and-so doesn't like it, or so-and-so doesn't like me. I don't have time to worry about it. Because I know that my significance comes from God. I was thinking this morning, I was thinking um, how parents are just carriers. And God is your father. So even if you didn't have a father and a mother, you're not theirs first and foremost. Your gods, they just carried you and they were given you to steward. But if they didn't steward you well, you have a father that loves you so much he loves you so much. And if you can grasp onto how much he loves you and what that looks like, what people say, what people say uh, you can use the breathe method that I use, like freeze it in, weigh it. If there are any validity to it, you can use it and throw the rest away. You don't have time to worry about people and what they think about you. And I'm not saying that we don't all need feedback and time to improve. But first and foremost, make sure that people that are giving you uh, the most feedback are people that know you and love you and are doing it because they care about you. Not just the naysayers online who you're just going to take their opinion because, you know, no. No, no. With everything. Take it in, weigh it. Is a part of this right? Is all of this right? Do I need to change? And God will help you change if you need to change because we all need to improve. But let nobody... If people criticize your assignment, they did with Jesus, so you're in good company. And every pastor that I know, every preacher I know has been criticized publicly. Every preacher that I love, every preacher that I know has been criticized publicly. The um, the 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 two churches that I was a part of previously, the church that I'm a part of online now, they've all gone through their share of criticism. So what I said to God was, I'm in good company. 
I'm in good company because every pastor that I've admired, every preacher that I've admired or, or you know, um, taken tips from has been criticized publicly. Every one of them. Everyone has been criticized publicly. So I'm in good company. And if you look in your industry, even if it's not it, not preaching, whether it be real estate, whether it be teaching, whether it be the computer industry, people that came before in your industry have been criticized as well. Look up your industry, whatever industry that is, and look up the people that you admire and whether they've been criticized. I, I believe if you criticize, if you look hard enough, you'll, you'll, you'll see through interviews on YouTube how they were criticized and how they, they either fell apart or let it, let it, let it, how they either faltered or how they let it, how they let the criticism um, be used as fuel. Thank you guys so much. See you on Sunday. Bye. This sermon is going to be called Faltering versus Fueling. Are you going to let critics let you falter and quit? Are you going to use their criticism as fuel to let it fuel you to your destiny? So it's going to be called Faltering versus Fueling. Thanks, guys. Bye.